Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we're going to quickly run through the IL-2 Stomavik keybinds. All right, so uh, I just recently just started getting into this game. So if you haven't heard of it, uh, if you like playing DCS World and you like World War II stuff, this is the game for you, my man. Or my lady, whichever, whichever person you are. So we're going to run through because the keybinds in this are not very good at all. So if you think DCS keybinding is terrible, you ain't seen nothing yet. So we're going to quickly run through because this took me a while to set this up. So you're going to go into on your, this is the main menu here. I'm going to go to settings and you're going to quickly, first of all, go to input devices, make sure that you have a joystick detected. Okay. And that's all you need. Don't touch anything else. Okay. Joystick. That's all we need. Make sure the joystick is actually being recognized. And then we're going to go into key mapping. So we've got all these uh, options here. Camera controls, pilot head control, plane controls, plane engine controls. So there's no, in DCS world, you've got module per module. So you know, you've set up the Hornet, you've got to set up the, uh, the F-16, the Harrier. They've all got their own separate keybinds. Whereas IL-2, it's a generic set of keybinds for most aircraft. There's a couple that are weird, but most of them, uh, once you set them up, you're okay. So we're going to run through what took me a long time to sort out. So first things first, if uh, when you're using the, the camera controls or when you, if you use track IR, I should say, my God, if you use track IR, all of this stuff, so I've deleted them all here, but anything that's got um, mouse X or mouse Y axis. So, so just move this. No, you're not gonna do it to me. Okay, whatever. Uh, rotate camera, here we go. You're not going to do it now? Oh, come on. There we go, mouse Y. There we are. So if it says mouse Y, mouse X, delete all that shit. If you use track IR, okay? So in your camera controls and pilot head controls, go through and delete any of them that say mouse X, mouse Y, all right, so that's first thing in camera controls and pilot head controls as well. I think the other one will be right there. Pilot bow head vertically. Um, I'm going to delete all of those. Okay, because I've got tracker. I don't need to worry about any of that shit. Okay, so bow, pilot head vertically, turn, pilot head horizontally. will be bound to the mouse as well. Delete it all if you use tracker. If you don't use tracker and you're going to use the mouse to look, fucking leave it as it is. All right, but... Uh, if not, you don't want the mouse because if you bump the mouse, then it moves your fucking your uh, your head while you're looking in tracker and fucks shit up. So delete that. Once you've done all that, we're going to come through. So here is the main one. So we've got scrolling down in camera controls. The only real one that you may want to. Where is the bad boy? Uh, take note of is reset camera numpad five. Okay, if your camera gets all fucked up, press that and it will reset the camera back to center. But apart from that, that is it. All right, you've got all the if you want to do free cam and all that kind of shit, that's all sweet. So pilot head control, this is the first one where we are going to be setting up some things. So we've got pilot head zoom, pilot head zoom in. Okay, so zoom in. So this is what you use if you fly DCS. Uh, you zoom in and zoom out. All right, whatever you bound that to. So I've got it bound to uh, on my potas for the warthog. It would be TMS, sorry DMS, DMS up for zoom in, DMS down for zoom out. Um, you can have a reset zoom if you want. And the only other one I've got here, quick zoom maximum. All right, uh, is a button. It will just quickly snap zoom into full. So if you want that, uh, I find it quite handy as well. Okay, quick zoom maximum. Set that to something as well, and it helps you out. And that is pretty much all you're going to need. The only other one that may come in handy if you fly the Russian stuff is this one here, numpad decimal. If you press that, it kind of moves your head down, and you look underneath the dash so you can see your compass and all that kind of stuff. But all the rest of it, don't worry about the numpads. It's all good. So that's your head controls. You just mainly want zoom. Okay, zoom, zoom in, zoom out, and uh, quick zoom maximum if you want to use it. Plane controls, next. All right, so this is where this shit starts to get fucking crazy because it's not very, there's no, there's no uh, like notes on, you know, 
any of the stuff what it is. So we're going to start from the top, work our way through. So AI autopilot on off, pretty straightforward. You press A and you fly, uh, um, sorry, left shift A. It turns on autopilot level flight. So if you, you know, you're AFK and you don't want to crash on the ground, you can press left shift A and your pilot or your plane will just fly straight and level. Won't be, it'll just fly until, you know, you come back. So that's uh, that's already bound for you. You don't have to worry about that. Um, the axes control. So you're going to come into here. You don't have to set up any curves on this. So unlike DCS where you can set up user curves, don't worry about it. Uh, it's pretty much straightforward, plug and go, happy days. So you're going to click on the axis. So we're going to go pitch first. So this fucked me up last time. All right, when I first went through the binds. So make sure to assign an axis of the joystick. Make sure that you read the description. Make sure your joystick is in center. After that, move it to the limit, which will cause moving up. So moving up means, in plain terms, pulling back on the stick, okay? Not push the stick forward. You know, just make sure you read it properly because it fucks you up otherwise. Move it to the limit, which will cause move down. So you're going to pull back first and then push forward second. And that will assign, okay? So moving back, pull up, nose down, joystick one, axis Y, all right? Press accept to lock it in, lock it in Eddie. Plane control roll, click on that. Same deal, make sure it's center, move to the limit which will cause moving right and then finally moving to the left. Okay, make sure you do that. Just gonna cancel that and then on your, same deal. After that, move to the limit which will cause moving right and then moving left. All right, so if you don't do that correctly, so if you go left and right, your shit's gonna be back to front. All right, and then you'll go to uh, either roll left or right, and it'll go back to front opposite of what you want it to do, which we don't want to do. Um, sweet, so that's your axis command. So again, you don't have to worry about any binds, um, setting up curves or anything like that. Just leave it as is. Rudder trim, okay, so you trim. So this is another wacky thing about IL2 that screwed me up as well. So rudder trim, elevator trim, and aileron trim. So rudder trim is your left and right. So to point your nose left or right, horizontally when you set up your trim okay whatever you want to bind it to i've got it to my tms um, left and right tms left for rudder trim left tms right for rudder trim right um, that's for me personally but you can bind it to whatever you want but you need to bind those but you have to do more than that so if you just bind rudder trim switch left rudder trim switch right and go in and try and use rudder trim it doesn't work all right, for some reason, you have to bind in rudder trim axis the exact same button. So you come into here. All right, so here we go. This is where it's also weird. After that, so first move the axis. Ah, fucking scratch that up the top. We're assigning keys. Press the key, which will cause an increase of value, and then press the key, which will cause a decrease of value. But it is for trim. Okay, so we're trimming. So just assume right. Okay, right is first. You want to trim the right first so press rudder trim right then rudder trim left then once you've got rudder trim axis bound or set make it the same buttons as your rudder trim switch then your switches will work okay trim will work same deal with elevator so elevator pitch up and down so you're going to make sure you set your trim switches up and down and then again elevator trim axis do the right okay or the um the second one down so we're going to go Whatever your trim switch down is, that is what you're gonna set. So trim switch down, trim switch up, and then same deal with aileron trim. So you need the trim switch itself as well as aileron trim axis. If you don't have the axis bound, it will not work. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You can have a reset trim if you wanna reset everything back to default, left control T, but most of the time you're going to be, um, you know, once it's trimmed, it's gonna be sweet. You've trimmed it there for a reason, you don't need to reset it. Adjustable stabilizer axis. So this is for the 109s. So if you're flying the uh, the German 109s, stabilizer switch, pitch up, pitch down. This is for the 109s German stuff. So again, same deal. Set the axis and then set your pitch and down, up and down switches, and it'll work. Flaps, you know, bind as required. Flap up, flap down. Uh, air brakes. You don't really need to worry about because there's not many aircraft in IL2 that have air brakes. G for gear up, gear down, pretty straightforward. And then wheel brakes, I've got wheel brake um, to my paddle switch on the, the joystick. And then my left wheel brake is on my rudder pedal, right wheel brake on my rudder pedals as well, the toe brakes. And that is pretty much 
what you're going to need are navigation lights. If you want to turn them on and off, I've got it on the little pinky switch on the outside of the throttle on the Warthog Hootas, same as I would use for my uh, lights in DCS. And that's pretty much all the plane controls you need. Next one, plane engine controls. We continue. There's no clickable cockpits in IL2, IL2 just FYI. So engine start procedure, stop procedure. So auto start is E. Press E to start the engines up and you're good to go. Engine throttle control, you're going to set this up. Okay, so you need throttle. So throttle is your engine RPM. Uh, your, uh, your, sorry, your... Um, your, uh, your inches of mercury, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you need to set this up. So I've got this set. Throttle control is set to my actual joystick throttle lever. Okay, throttle lever on the joystick. Engine mixture control. So this is going to be for your, um, your fuel mixture. So you're going to start off in, you know, you can go full rich. You can go full uh, lean. So you need engine mixture control bound. Again, I've got that set to my boat hat. Boat switch, sorry, on the Thrustmaster Woodhog Hotel. So another little funky thing that caught me out here is if you press, I'm going to press boat hat forward, or boat switch forward. Okay, so I pressed it forward and then I flicked it back to center and it's bound the same thing twice. So joystick two, button eight, joystick two, button eight. What you need to do is you need to, rather than just pushing it forward and then letting it come back to center slowly, we're going to go retry. I'm going to just flick it forward and then flick it aft. There you go, so joystick button two, sorry, joystick two, button eight, joystick two, button nine. So that is it. If you ever get a double bind that's the exact same, it will not work. So you just gotta flick the switch forward and flick it back. Otherwise it'll double bind the same one for some reason. So just be aware of that because that caught me out as well. So joystick, so that's on my boat switch on the HOTAS. So I'm using that for my mixture control. Uh, engine supercharger mode. So if you wanna have that, I've got it for supercharger and boost is pretty much is the uh, equivalent on there. I've got the same button, which is my autopilot button on the Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas. That's what that is bound to. Um, and again, you can bind this stuff to whatever you want, but I'm just telling you what I've got it bound to if you do use the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas. Propeller RPM. So this one here, you're going to also need. I've got this one bound to the uh, the slider, the, the, the fake decrease-increase friction slider. Um, what would be your zoom, zoom in, zoom out on DCS? It's right next to your uh, landing gear warning silencer. It's just a, a slider that you can move forward and back. I've got it bound to that for propeller RPM control. Next one, oil radiators. So this I have got bound to my China hat. So oil radiator, um, when you bind it, so you want to make sure that we've got... Fuck off. Frick. Uh, to assign... Press the key, which will cause increase of the value. So again, if I press and hold it, it double binds it. So you've got to go tap it forward, tap it off. Okay, and that's on the China hat, the little red China hat on the uh, the Thrustmaster Hotas throttle. Wheel radiator is there. Uh, you're going to need water radiator, which I've got bound to the CMS switch on the Hotas on the joystick, the countermeasure switch. So CMS forward to open, CMS aft to close um, and then same deal for the 109 water radiator I've pretty much set up so there's this is where it gets um, specific the specific aircraft type so if you fly on the 109 the 110 Spitfire the radiator is not going to work on the water radiator shut off shutters control axis you need to bind this one but I've bound it the exact same button so Spitfire 109 110 I've still bound it okay open is forward aft is close all right, and then engine inlet cow shutters, same deal, bind these. So this is for your engines, okay? So 11 and 10, which is the same as my oil radiator. So I've just bound it the same. So it's just the same thing, cooling your engine down. And then engine outlet cows, which is your water there, I've bound it to CMS, okay? So that's just different. Engine inlet cow is the same as the water radiator and the same as the water radiators for them. And your engine outlet cow, uh, sorry, the uh, engine inlet cowl is your engine oil radiator, shutters, the equivalent. And then your outlet cowl is your water radiator. So hopefully that clears up. You can play that back <laughs> as you will. And that's pretty much all the controls you're going to need for the plane controls. 
Weapon controls, next one. Okay, so you've got options here. So fire all guns. You can bind that to your, uh, your trigger and it will fire your cannons, it'll fire your machine guns. Any gun you've got fitted to the jet, it will fire all of them at the same time. If you don't want to do that, fire weapon group one will be your machine gun. Fire weapon group two will be your, uh, your cannons. And if you've got 20 mil or 30 mil cannons, it'll fire those separately. And then fire weapon group three will be um, any extra rocket, uh, sorry, not rockets, any extra um, heavy, heavy guns will be that one. But mainly fire one and two. Weapon group one, weapon group two are the ones that you want to buy. And if you want to have them separate, if not, just leave it, fire all guns at the same time. The only drama with that is if you're taking, uh, if your aim is not very good, by the time you finally hit them, you'll would have because you've shot so many times, you would have wasted all of your uh, your heavy ammunition on your cannon, and you only be left with machine gun stuff, which isn't going to do a great deal of damage. So, I've got them bound to separate ones. Up to your personal choice. Uh, drop bombs. I've got that set to my you know weapon release button on the joystick, the little red button, the pickle button. Uh, launch rockets. I've got that set to my. Um, my cage on cage switch on the throttle okay but again bind this shit to whatever you want to bind it to but this is what the stuff that you want if you want to drop bombs you need a bomb bind if you want to drop if you want to fire rockets you need a rocket bind and then the next one that we are after is pretty much what have we got gun sight range adjustment there we go so these two here uh is for when you're flying the something with a like a reflex sight so the the 109 uh, sorry the god damn it the p51 where you can equip the reflex sight you can change the uh, wingspan same on the spitfire change the wingspan and the ranging so you can set for like 33 feet or 33 meters whatever the fuck whatever you want to do set your wingspan and then you can set your uh, convergence range as well if you want to do that and that's pretty much that for that and then flight leader controls, if you're going to be doing uh, campaign stuff, you can go through. I haven't done any of that stuff. I'm just doing PvP pretty much. And then tank controls, I haven't even bothered with that. Right? But that's pretty much how you will set up your game controls for IL-2. All right, so that's pretty much the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it. So hopefully that helped, guys, because, yeah, like I said, the setup for the IL-2 controls is not very uh, user-friendly at all. It's super super bad in comparison to dcs um because that's what i mainly play that's why i'm comparing to that but in terms of a fucking sweet game i am really enjoying it so if you haven't uh, checked out il2 there's a sale on at the moment if you're watching this later sales probably ended but just keep your eye on the website really really sweet game for um world war ii stuff so if you like the the world war ii dog fighting and all that kind of stuff shooting people with cannons no radars no missiles you got to actually use your eyeballs this is the game for you my friends if you're not a fan of the uh, the modern day jet fighting the world war ii stuff is pretty damn good and uh multiplayer stuff's pretty sweet as well damage models are good so definitely worth a uh, check out guys but uh yeah awesome that'll do us there i think uh so if you did like the video make sure you hit the like button as always appreciate you guys let me know in the comments if you've got any uh, extra hints and tips about keybinds. Fucking throw them in there as well. Because uh, the more we can spread how to get IL-2 set up, because it's pretty daunting. Like, if you don't know kind of what's what, it's really hard to figure out what the hell. Because you can't even, like, you mouse over something. Like, camera's pretty straightforward, but plain engine controls, throttle control. Be nice if it, like, just brought a little, uh, you know, pop-up of what the throttle, a little definition of what the throttle does. That'd be nice, you know? engine throttle give me a definition of what we want so um yeah that'd be nice but that's why i made the video hopefully it helps you guys out if you haven't already it would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button on the youtube channel as well we're humming along we're getting close to 700 followers now 700 subscribers sorry uh so thank you all you legends who have hit the subscribe button already if you haven't i can smash that button for me that'd be great jump on board get amongst it with the rest of us. And lastly but not least, I do stream on Twitch Monday to Friday at 1300 Australian Western Standard Time most days. Uh, some days I uh, am not there stream, but most of the days I am. So yeah, come on by, say good day, drop us a follow on Twitch as well. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions live on stream, I'll be more than happy to do my best to answer them. And if I don't know, I'll point you in the right direction. Well, hopefully someone in chat can uh, can help you out as well. Everyone's really helpful. 
in the community we got going, which is fucking awesome. That's what we're after. Good bunch of fuckers. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.